Kimi K2 was released by Moonshot and it's making a big impact in the AI industry. And you might say, nah, I've been using Claude and Gemini and they're working just fine. So why should I really care about this? Most people probably never heard of Kimi K2 or even Moonshot because on the commercial side, the market is widely dominated by OpenAI, Anthropic and Gemini. But there's a reason why open model community is raving about models like Kimi K2. The reason why Kimi K2 is not widely known has mostly to do with the word large in the large language model, meaning these open source models are still too large to run locally to get the same result as the state of the art models. For example, Kimi K2 has a total of 1 trillion parameters, which is comparable to other frontier models like GPT, Gemini, and Claude. The competitive edge that these models have over Kimi K2 is economies of scale. What I mean by that is that to run a trillion parameter model for millions of users that they have, you need a large scale infrastructure to support it. And sadly, to to run Kimi K2, you need to spend about $25,000 minimum to purchase Nvidia's H100 card, similar to buying a brand new card. And just like owning a car, you need to put gasoline to run it. And H100 can cost up to $90 per month to run it locally, spending around 0.7 kilowatts. So you might ask at this point, what's really the big deal here then? It looks like Kimi K2 is still not really there yet, right? Sure, the math still favors the commercial models because you only pay a subscription fee of $200 per month per device developer to have unlimited API calls to use state-of-the-art models like Claude. That's only $2,400 per year, which is significantly less than paying $25,000 to run Kimi K2. If you think about it from a company's perspective though, paying $2,400 per year per developer, the math starts to tilt slowly towards the other way. For example, the $25,000 hardware that a company purchased could be considered as an initial investment that you pay up front as a capital expenditure and can be depreciated in taxes. And on top of that, the following year will only cost $1,080 per year in electricity costs for inference, which is far less than the $2,400 and potentially less if the same equipment is shared between two developers. So you can see why there's so much excitement around these models like Kimi K2 because the open model market is slowly catching up to a point where a state-of-the-art comparable models like Kimi K2 can now be harnessed locally. So the obvious next question is how? How is it that Kimi K2 is able to perform so well against state of the art models like Claude, GPT, and Gemini. The architecture of Kimi K2 is built around what's called MOE, or mixture of experts. Most commercial models like GPT and Claude are what's called dense models, while Kimi K2 is a sparse model. A dense model is your typical feed forward neural network that can activate the entire model to process tokens, whereas sparse models activate only a section or few sections of the model to process your tokens. That's why even though Kimi K2 is 1 trillion parameters inside, Size, it actually only activates eight sections, in this case, eight experts per token. The model has in total 384 exports that all add up to about 1 trillion parameters in size. And this makes the inference a lot faster given the size because it only utilizes 32 billion active parameters at a time. Kimi K2 is also built around actions, meaning that it's specifically trained to make better tool calls. And I think this is a very important point where LLM benchmarks, which are typically used to measure the raw intelligence intelligence of a given model is now expanding to look for models that are more resourceful in being able to leverage external services and tools to create better action. Moonshot recognizes and specifically trained Kimi K2 on simulated tool usage to learn how to be resourceful in calling the right tools for different purposes and different contexts. And this will pay huge dividend as the industry is shifting towards MCP and A2A or Asian to Asian networks, which requires a lot of external reliance. My next question then is, how does Kimi K2 line up with what happened back in January 2025 when DeepSeek R1 was first released and shook the world? Remember when the announcement of DeepSeek came out as ChatGTP killer and the stock market ended up dropping by a trillion dollars? Eventually, the cost of operating these models will be on par with using frontier models like OpenAI's GPT, Anthropic's Claude, and Google's Gemini. For every major release like DeepSeek R1 or Kimi K2, it starts to eliminate the competitive edge that these companies currently enjoy. And I think this is why LLM providers recognize that their competitive edge is not permanent, which is why we're seeing them expanding their product offerings to adjacent products like AI code editors, AI web browser, and AI chat applications and more, because that sustains their competitive edge a little bit longer. So as we look forward to open source models like Kimi K2 becoming more available and more useful, we'll get to see how the industry changes. And it'll be interesting to see where self-hosting will start to become the norm or maybe 
the commercial models will continue to dominate the industry because they can just put more dollars behind for faster innovation.